hi guys um hi everyone how are we all doing um um this morning or this afternoon rather <laughs> oh my god you know when you stay at home for so long um you don't even know the difference between morning and afternoon anymore so um today i want to talk about um you know from my last video i've had a few people come back to ask me to clarify a few things that i said or to elaborate even more on that so um today i, I wanted to talk about um sacrifice and please i'm talking to people from africa mostly and anyone else who if this resonates with you please um join in but if it doesn't resonate with you you know fine you can scroll away <laughs> so um my question to you today and um, is what i posed on the on the topic for today is uh, what does sacrifice mean to you when you hear uh, for example when a pastor tells you you need to sacrifice or you know you want to achieve something and you are told to make make a sacrifice what comes to your mind what do you think um i ask this question because um there are lots of um trends would i call it a trend or things happening especially and i keep saying especially in nigeria and other parts of africa now i see a lot of young people young especially young men young men our youths getting themselves involved in rituals and what they call sacrifices because they want to um they want to become successful they want to be wealthy they want to have money some of them you know get involved in killing in you know doing a lot of atrocities some even go to extent of killing their own parents their family members they are um you know killing people kidnapping people and actually killing them so this this also is one of the things that worry me a lot so it makes me to begin to wonder what is the mindset of these people who told them that sacrifice means to go and kill somebody so that's why i ask the question to you know whoever is watching i ask the question what does sacrifice mean to you and this question is a personal one you have to answer but for now i'll tell you this when you hear sacrifice sacrifice means um and for those who studied economics in school or even commerce you would have heard foregone alternative you would have heard about foregone alternative if you do budgeting you will hear um priorities things like that now these days our people take sacrifice as you know they they take it as in the olden times and what baffles me is that these people also call themselves christians if you're a christian and your your idea of sacrifice is killing and pouring blood then you are not a christian then you are not a christian because i said this again i said it last time i said this again jesus christ jesus christ's death on the cross is the only blood only sacrifice that has to be made with blood for our sins for us to you know for us to live and if at all you want to somebody wants to die or something then you can die not going to kill another person but i will explain that i will explain that uh, you know in due course but now let's focus on this sacrifice of a thing i want to give you um draw your mind to my husband says this a lot about seed most of the things that he talks about are centered on seed 
and you know the more i listen to him the more i hear him talk about the seed and relating it to the word of god relating it to trees and you know fruit and development and success and the more my mind opens on that now i want to i want you now to cast your mind to any seed at all is it corn seed or beans or any seed at all now when you get a seed and put it in the ground can you imagine what happens to that seed sometimes the seed will have to die in the ground sometimes it gets rotten then before it sprouts and then before it pushes its way through the sand isn't it and then it begins to grow it begins to grow and then sometimes um people might have to tend it you know sometimes nobody tends them it depends on what kind of seed it is and how that seed you know how resilient how tenacious the seed is and the seed begins to grow and now as the seed grows it keeps growing and matures and then starts bearing fruit now did you see the sacrifice the seed made there before it became a tree if you didn't see it i will tell you now the seed had to die the seed had to give up its comfort it had to release the coat you know almost every seed had a, has a coat it had to release the coat which coats it from you know the pressures of the earth the wind the sun the rain for it to be able to sprout now let me bring it back now to you and i young people like yourself and myself how many of us are willing to forego their comfortable bed to walk how many of us is um is a, is, is is willing to forego a meal to save money for what they want for their lives how many of us are willing to forgo their lipstick their perfume uh, if, you know is willing to forgo their packaging as they call it how you package yourself you want to be seen you look rich and all that how many of us are willing to forgo our comfort to go for that thing that we need to grow how many of you can decide that okay this year i will go with my foot i won't have a car i'm not I, I will have to you know whatever money i spend on having to drive and the comfort of a car i will save it in the next two three years to be able to save enough money to start my business or start whatever or invest you know invest in your skills whether is they're uh, going to reskill yourself the world we are in now if you are listening you will hear so many people losing their jobs like somebody will say it's no longer about the board the certificate the board the paper you have it's now about what you can do and so many people are now recursing, taking, you know, taking a recourse back to what they can do with their, with their hand. And that reminds me, in our Igbo place, it said, um, Ihe akage kotara kigeri. Ihe akage kotara kigeri. In, in English, that means what your hand can do or can bring is what you, you will eat. You know, if you're not able to, if you're not willing to soil your hand, don't expect to have gold in it. Don't expect gold, even gold, even diamond. They all go through a lot of pressure. They sacrifice. That is what sacrifice is. Sacrifice in a nutshell for anyone who hasn't still got what I'm talking about. Sacrifice that, 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 that you need for you to succeed in life. is the sacrifice of foregoing your own comfort. Forgone alternative. What are you willing to forego to be able to have that you need or you want? If I want to, if I want to, um, if I want to have a business, if I want to send my children to school, then I should be willing to forego other other comforts to be able to get the money because of scarcity, limited limited uh, availability of resources, scarcity of resources. Nobody, 
no human being on earth has everything that they want or need no human being has everything that they want it depends on how you manage yourself so so many people who say they are poor are actually not poor uh, you know people who sometimes when people say that they are poor it means that they haven't known how to prioritize what they have even sometimes I hear people say they don't have time they don't have time you know but you find them having time for things that have nothing absolutely nothing to do with what they want to choose what they want to do or achieve so the the question is not i don't have the question is what you have what are you doing with it how are you prioritizing it how are you using it you know in this social on this social media especially facebook it saddens me when a lot of people, a lot of, you know, people, um, especially people from Nigeria, from Africa, they turn themselves to beggars. And you look at them, they are not sick, they are not disabled, they are not, you know, is, you know they easily want to beg. The people you are begging, you don't even know what their situation is. You just, you know, conclude that they, they, they are living a good life simply because they are managing themselves. Oftentimes, you have more than the people you are putting under pressure. How can somebody who is strong, hmm, a young man who is strong, be asking for money for, for food? we shameless to say give me money for food we need to change our mindset we need to change how we think you know sometimes we we think that um, people who don't give us money or people who don't give us what we ask for are wicked they that money so wicked doesn't give most times those are people who give the most People, sometimes people who withhold certain things from you are the people who give you the most. Because these are people who make you to think. These are people who make you to look inside, look within you. These are people who teach you that you have what you're looking for. Right there. This morning I read, um, I read uh, a news that um, a 16-year-old boy Sudanese drowned in the ocean on his way, you know, trying to come into the UK. That saddened my heart. I was so sad. I said, look at that 16 year old. Now, before somebody will, you know, will walk and do and, you know, travel and to get to the point of the maybe Pacific Ocean or whatever ocean, um to get to the uk you must have gone through hell and i bet you most of our youths who who die on their way coming to europe some of these people are people who refuse to go to the farm these are people who refuse to even go to learn any hand work they refuse to look at now who is doing our carpentry who is doing our welding who is doing um um you know i, I don't know who who who, are, who is doing all those things some of the, the tailoring fashion designing why is it hard for us to learn these things let me tell you about china and this is also another sad story because china is almost is at the verge of recolonizing the entire african nations and africa as a continent has the highest number of young people africa and on all the continents has the highest number of young people what does that mean that means africa has the highest number of workforce human resources the workforce that the world needs is right now in africa yet africa 
as a continent remains the poorest. We have the, all the natural resources. I said this before, but I don't want to repeat myself. Now, how did China get to where they are today? China gradually, gradually, patiently, you know, consistently continued to walk and rise. And today, China is, there's no decision about the war that is taking today that China wouldn't have its own, its own uh, contribution. In fact, China is now the deciding factor in so many things. How did China get there? I remember when we were young, you know, when we were young, I used to hear um, people, you know, the older people used to say, you know, anything that is inferior, they'll tell you it's China. You know, people, nobody wanted to buy China, anything from China. But right now, right now, <laughs> what option do you have if you don't want to buy China, Chinese made? If us as Africans haven't learned anything from slavery and colonization, I bet you China is going to recolonize us and it's going to be worse. And it's not going to be what you know, talking about it or demonstrating, protesting, or calling people racist and all that. It's not going to stop it. It's not going to save us. I say this because um, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in Jesus Christ, or you believe in uh, uh, um, um, Allah, or whatever you believe in, God the Creator has given us His power, has given us power, gave us you know, breath in us. Give us the willpower. Whatever we will is what we receive. What you decide is what happens. That is, that is how God made it. God gave us the power to decide. So this one we are deceiving ourselves, going from one church to another. You know, it's not going to save the situation. China is at the verge of re-enslaving, not even colonizing, re-enslaving African nations, including Nigeria, the largest black nation in the world. The, the giant of Africa, so-called. If we, <laughs> if we, any human being in Africa below 60 years, if we don't sit up and do something right now, if we don't take our power into our own hand, I don't know what we're going to tell our children. We're going to hand over our, to our children blame games and warning and, and uh, moaning and whining and name calling and blaming of other people. That's what we'll hand over. So now I'm telling you this. How did China get there? How many times have I asked this question now? Now, China started from doing it. From realizing that no one else will feed them except themselves. From realizing that they must soil their hands by realizing that they them they alone can till their ground they alone can plant what they will eat they alone will manufacture what they will use i see a lot of so-called celebrities and you know africans once they, they they get any little money everybody is coming to europe to buy everything that they need A few days ago, I was reading a statistic. It says that um, how many million, um, how many trillion, uh, how many million dollars of uh, remittance from um, from diaspora, you know, make up, um, I think about six, it's uh, um, eight, 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 eight billion dollars is the amount of money. Eight, eight billion dollars is the amount of money. People that live in, um, in, 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 in Europe and America, outside, the, outside Nigeria, that is the amount of money people outside Nigeria send to Nigeria every year. The money that people who live outside Nigeria, they send over 80 billion US dollars to Nigeria every single year. Yet, we hear that Nigeria is poor. There are so many countries of the world, their GDP is not up to that. 
Yet every time I hear that we don't have, uh, that we have poverty, we have people are poor, I keep wondering what is this um, um, 28 billion, sorry, 28 billion. What are we doing with this? Change this 28 billion, change it with um, whatever exchange, multiply it with whatever exchange and see how many trillion it will come to in Naira. Yet, every day people tell me that there is no money. They are hungry. Because we haven't, we haven't learned the, the virtue of using what we have, multiplying what we have. The Bible makes us to know that anybody who doesn't, you know, anybody who doesn't multiply what they are given means that the person is, you know, the person is, is unappreciative. When you don't appreciate what you have, you will never multiply it. You can't multiply what you don't appreciate. So it's shameful that people living abroad in Nigeria alone send more than 28 billion US dollars every single year into the country. Yet there's so much poverty everywhere. And we don't see it that we are you know sending our children into slavery we we send we put our own children our people into slavery your brother is abroad every day he goes to work seven days a week your sister is abroad he he she works seven days a week she has to pay her bills she has to save money and send to you and you use it to do party to show off you never use the money to multiply it so that you become independent and your brother or your sister can live his or her own life and be able to train their children. We keep on recycling. We keep on recycling pain. We keep on recycling trauma. We keep on recycling poverty in our families. If we have one person in our family who, who has, you know, tried to, to raise their head out of poverty, everybody drags them down. Everybody drags them down. Everybody depends on this person, pulling them down, pulling, taking, 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 until that, that door, you know, until that house crumbles. Everybody will move out. It's shameful that we, they, instead of us getting better, we're getting worse. I was listening to a guy recently, you know, he was talking about this China thing, about Nigeria going to borrow more money from China and the clauses in the agreement and all that. And even the so-called uh, Senator Amechi or whoever, you know, of Nigeria, even agreeing and telling you know, shamelessly telling people that, telling the media that if it means that uh, with Nigeria defaults that uh, China will take some part of the country's um, infrastructure and stuff, property, or even, uh, uh, what's it called, um, I forgot. You know, that is where we are now because of what? Because we refuse to work. Let me tell you, there's also... Um, there's also a saying in Igbo language, I will also explain it, you know, it says that whatever kills, if a child does not know what killed the father, no, if a child does what kills the father, that what killed the father will kill him or her. What does that mean? <laughs> you know, we, we, we hear a lot of um, ancestral curse, especially the churches and pastors. This is one of the things that they use in holding people to ransom. They, told, they tell you your problem is ancestral curse. You know, you, you need to be broken. <laughs> oh, God. Sometimes they tell you that um, a particular sickness or something runs in the family. This one, medically, that's what, that's what we hear all the time. But nobody tells you how this happens. Whether it's ancestral cause they've told you, or whether they told you, oh, because your father uh, had BP, therefore you're going to have BP, because this happened, that happened. Let me tell you this. 
God creates every individual, every individual unique. Yes, you might have some physical re resemblance with your parents, with your uh, uncles and all that. It does not mean that every single thing that happens to your brother or your sister or your uncle or whatever will happen to you. No. If not, God will be a liar. What happens is, as we grow, our environment shapes us. We form different kinds of habits. We form a lifestyle based on what we see every day. And then we keep on doing the same thing we see happening. We do the same things that we know. The same things we are introduced to, we do continue to do it. And then if you don't um, liberate yourself, and when I say liberate yourself, I didn't say go to church and start praying to liberate yourself. Liberating yourself is by getting knowledge. Let me tell you about Abraham. Abraham you know was in a in a village where in his village everybody else were worshiping uh, you know idols and things like that but in his mind he began to think there must be a higher god there must be a god that created everything i don't think all this stick and things we are worshiping is god he began to seek god even the bible tells you that until you seek knowledge until you seek wisdom wisdom will not come to you and in one of my in, in, in my book, there's a quote I, I I wrote there. The quote says, "You know, the wisdom we are looking for, the wisdom we are looking for, is in that page you never opened." There are so many of us who will tell me, "I'm a degree holder. I I went to university of this. I'm I, you know I'm educated." When was the last time you picked up a book and read it from page to page and actually wrote down things? New knowledge. When was the last time you picked your Bible and read it in the way of trying to know things, not trying to, uh, not, not in, in the way of, you know, uh, because you are looking for something from God. How many times have you picked up a book and you, a book that has nothing to do with what you read in school, has nothing to do with, uh, uh, you know, passing exam and you pick up a book and you begin to read it and challenge your mind. That is what liberation is. Liberation is, you know, acquiring knowledge that will show you what killed your father mother that will show you why your family is still very poor why the you know poverty is continue to recycle in your family and show you how to get out of it how many times have you gone to a conference where they are teaching you practically how to build you know good habit for success how to build your mind for success how to remove the mindsets that and habits that you know draw us back how many times how many times are you able to forgo money that you wanted to do probably to do your hair to do your nails to do whatever and say okay i'm going to put this money forward towards you know learning towards my learning investing in myself self-care how many times have you said, I will not buy this Coke. I'll, I'll save this money so I can go for a checkup. So that you check your heart, check your body, check your, you know, pay so that your body can be checked. If you're worried about high BP in your family or diabetes or what, so many people who have diabetes never found out that they had diabetes until they are in coma. They have diabetic coma or the, the blood sugar is already too high and they are rushed to hospital. How often do you go and say, okay, let me go and, you know, you know, equip myself in a way that will make me go out of the same cycle that happens in my family. If nobody has been educated in your family, you can be the first. You can break that chain by sacrificing and going beyond what everybody in your family has done. 
if nobody has had business in your family you can become the first person to become the a business owner in your family by breaking away from the same habits by surrounding yourself with knowledge by surrounding yourself with people who will equip you by finding yourself mentors by reading books by seeking knowledge by seeking wisdom then you break yourself from that you don't need any pastor to to do any magic to liberate you you don't need any any uh, uh, what's they called to liberate you and nobody is causing um, um, poverty in your family not your uncle not your auntie not your grandfather grandmother or whoever it's not a spirit it's your habit is your habit your lifestyle are you willing to wake up in the middle of the night and sit down and read and do the work can you humble yourself even if after graduation can you humble yourself and go to a saloon and learn practically how to do hair for me you know I know that problem that one of the things that 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 you know that crippled Africa the worst is this sense of charity giving, the sense that you know uh, you know the sense of giving you know uh, reward for nothing. It has made us to be so dependent, shamelessly dependent. A human being is not created to be dependent on another person. Rather, we are supposed to be interdependent. That's why we have two hands. One hand, you know, left hand wash the right hand. The right hand wash the left hand. It's not only the right hand always washing the, 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 the left hand. The, the spirit of dependency, laziness has killed us Africans and I am seeing the doom coming to us. Look at now, there are discussions, there are, you know, world, um, what's it called, the um, uh, summit and everything happening, discussions going on about whatever coronavirus and things that COVID-19 going on. Where is the, where is African voice in all of that? Where is African voice in all of that? In, um, countries and nations of all, the, all, all everywhere in the world are racing to get their vaccine or have an opinion about vaccine and where is African voice in all of that where in this 21st century where who, what what are you know what are we contributing what is what is our own what are we what are we doing now we'll just sit back and wait. Probably Britain or America or France will then come and then they will give us the vaccine. Whatever is inside the vaccine, we don't even have a say. We just all take the vaccine and go. We can't even say no because we, we don't even believe in our own or whatever we can do or else even we can't even do anything in the first place. So I'm saying all these things so that we can begin to think beyond what we are going to put in our mouth. By now, we are supposed to have gone past this stage. You can forgo food for one day, you will not die. You can forgo one meal, you will not die. I hate to see people telling me to give them money for food. They are dying of hunger when you're living in your father's land, when you're living in your homeland. People abroad, majority of people, in fact, people abroad in America and in here are more likely not to be able to have what to eat than you. You are not paying electricity bill. You are not paying any tax. You are not paying nothing. You have land to farm. In London here, we don't even have balcony. We don't have garden. You have to buy every single thing you need. So the mindset that, you know, somebody has to give is a big problem. 
the mindset that somebody's owing you is a big problem. We need to change that if we must grow. There is no ancestral cause. There is no familiar spirit. It's our lifestyle. It's our beliefs. It's our habits that we need to break. We need to wake up. We need to get out of bed. We need to, um, you know, we need to learn to read. We need to, you know, we need to engage our time on things that are productive. We need to ask ourselves question, why is this happening? We need to be, you know, introspective. Ask yourself questions. When something is not working, when you have a challenge, it's not every challenge you have means that it won't work. Like I said from the beginning of this video, I said, look at the seed. I've never seen any seed that, you know, sprout out and became a tree without losing its coat. You know, the seed has to push through the soil to come up. You cannot succeed without any challenge. You see the catapults? When you want to do catapults, the, the, the more you stretch it back, the further it will go. So why are we scared of being stretched? Why are we scared of challenges? The moment, the first moment we have any little challenge, we crumble. We start uh, uh, going from one church to another. We start going from one uh, native doctor to another. We want to find out wh what killed the, how, why are people dying in our family? Have you ever asked yourself, from year to year, you eat food every day, you 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 drink wine, you drink, you party, you do, how often do you go to the hospital to do check up? How often do you sit down and check your health? How often do you sit down and read and compare your lifestyle with what is happening to you? There's something they call willful, willful ignorance. In this day and age now, nobody will say that they are ignorant of anything. Before, maybe in the 80s and 90s, we didn't used to see people abroad. We don't know. We believe that, you know, maybe once they come out, there are a lot of white people will give them money. <laughs> come to England and see the millions of people who are homeless. They, they have there's something they call food bank food bank where people who cannot who don't have food will go and they'll be giving food is a charity the problem that britain has britain cannot solve their own problem in the next one million years to come so if you're waiting for any white person to save you you're your own there is no free meal anywhere in the world. That was the first thing, the very first thing my, my elder brother told me when I came to Lagos. When I finished school and I came to Lagos to work, my brother called me. That was the first advice he gave me. And that advice, you know, you know, guided me. He said, my sister, <laughs> if anybody wants to take you out for lunch, it's not lie you. Eat to your own peril. There is no free meal anywhere. Somehow you will pay for it. So when you see people, they say they are doing charity. Listen, I'm telling my people, and even us here, our own people, our African people who engage in some of these so-called charities, we are killing our own people. We are making us more dependent. Charity given, handout, food, hand, food handout given, is only given in emergency. It's only given during war or disaster. So that people can have something to cover themselves and, you know, wear how to stand on their feet and move on. It's not a perpetual thing. If you want to do charity, do charity that will educate and teach people and train people to be able to fetch water for themselves. And teach people to be able to have, um, you know, skills that they can fend for themselves. Teach people how to get the fish. Stop doing charity of giving people clothes, giving people shoes, giving people uniform, giving people food. How long will you continue to do that? 
we are making our people more dependent. We are making our people think that there is a place there somewhere in the world where everything is dumped and is free. And that is why our people are dying in the oceans. Our young people, our young boys and girls are dying in the oceans. Our young boys and girls are being traded, trafficked to um, the Arab countries. Saudi Arabia and they are being killed and their their livers and their kidneys are being harvested there We need to stop this. We need to stop giving people at home the impression that money is on this You know you pick money on the street. Let us begin to teach our people to fend for themselves Let us begin to teach our people skills Let the charity will do be to teach our people skills to be able to feed themselves let us teach our people that wealth is not having a car. Wealth is not having houses. Wealth is being able to feed yourself, solve your problems. Wealth is not having the latest shoe or phone, or phone. That is not wealth. Wealth is being able to solve your own problems, being able to take yourself to hospital, being able to provide for your family, being able to train yourself, train your children, being able to feed yourself first. That is what, if you are able to feed yourself on this every single day, then you are wealthy. Every other thing, every other thing is just leisure. Let us stop making our people dependent. It has killed our nations. It has killed us. I remember when I was younger, my mom was a teacher. We used to fry gari we, in my house. By the time we harvest our cassava and fry gari, we, we get bags and bags of gari and we sell them. Sometimes the, the people who, we sell them like in the bags, like the people who do retail, the retailers who come and carry them and buy and, and we have money for other things we need. My mom was still a teacher. We farm. I farm. Look at my hands. I farm. I still farm. I love farming. We need to get back to the basis and stop, you know, looking for something that doesn't exist. And our children, our young women are dying in Saudi Arabia, Dubai. A few days ago, I, I saw a video where Nigerians said they were chased out wherever they were in Dubai. As long as we can't feed ourselves, we are going to be, continue to become, you know, laughing stock all over the world. People are going to be messing up with us. Look at China, um, uh, even uh, China, even Ghana, everywhere you go. Until we learn to sit down and solve our own problem, walk, soil our hands. You know, to walk is to pray. To walk is to pray. But these days, go to Nigeria, go to Africa, every, every corner there is church, every church, every pastor is casting, casting ancestral spirits. What is ancestral, ancestral spirit when we, we, we having habits that are holding us back? We need to wake up as a people. We need to. Our young people are dying in the oceans, going to abroad. Even in this day and age where videos are showing how the world is, there's information. Before there were no information, we could say, okay, people didn't know. But now, why would somebody, be, why would somebody make a journey that they would die in the ocean? When what you're coming here for is down there in multiple folds, just that we don't know how to wash it clean and, you know, see the value of it. I was saying before how China got to where, to where they are now. China began to make anything for any anybody, make clothes. As they do it, they begin to, you know, get better and better and better. And they were not greedy. Now, try to say you want to hire uh, 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 an undergraduate in Nigeria to do something for you. They, are charged, they want to charge you the same amount of money people are charging here. Why, why um, China, you know, sprout up was because they had to, they took advantage of, you know, uh, um, 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 low paid skill. So that when people cannot afford a service here, they know that they can afford it, they, they will outsource it to China. But a Nigerian, don't, don't, they, want to, they want to make the home money immediately. Meanwhile, they don't have the skill yet. They're still learning. 
even as I speak now, China still, you know, charges lower than even Nigeria to sew t-shirts. We don't want to have patience. We don't want to walk. We are all everywhere complaining, complaining and blaming everybody. China is coming to recolonize or even to re-enslave the entire African nation if we don't take time. I've said this before and I'm saying it again. This is time for us as a people to wake up. Every black person everywhere in the world need to wake up. If we don't save Africa, any, no, no black person is safe anywhere. We all have a duty to make sure and do whatever it takes to make sure that recolonization or re-enslavement of Africa does not happen anymore. By teaching our people the value of work, by teaching our people the value of work, by teaching our people the respect of work, there is no work that will feed you that is, that is uh, rubbish, that is menial. We must respect and value work any genuine genuine work any work that does not um, that is not criminal must be respected and valued that's all i have for you today thank you